Welcome back from the break. Now, with about two months before the December general elections, Ghana is facing mounting labor unrest with key labor groups on strike. At least 10 labor unions are set to start a strike next week or are already on strike. Let's share with you the numbers for you to then appreciate what we're dealing with now. Now, we understand that uh, we have five unions which are currently on strike. We also pick information that five unions are threatening strike by next week. Um, uh, so th th these are the numbers there. So it means that five already on strike now, five to join next week. That will make it 10 of the unions already on strike. Now, uh, if we look at the labor unions on strike, we have Senior Staff Association of University Senior Staff Association. We have NCC staff. We have the Ghana Ad Administrators, you know, the GAWA. Uh, we also have FUSA, uh, FUSAG, which is the Federation of University Senior Staff Association of Ghana. We have TEU uh, also on strike now. I mean, the, the senior staff began theirs on se September 16. NCC started September 18. GAWA started on September 18. FUSAC started on September 18. And TEU began on September 20. Uh, there you have it for, for reasons that these guys are on strike. Now, those who are threatening to strike, we have the Mortuary Workers Association. They are threatening to begin their strike on September 26th. And September 26th is in, in three days' time. So just this week, we'll be seeing some more people beginning their strike action. And the reason for mortuary workers uh, to declare strike action, they say, is because of unpaid salaries. CETA, you remember CETA was uh, on strike for over two months. They are uh, threatening to, re -begin, to begin that strike again. And they say that the reason for that is unfulfilled promises given by government. And the date they want to begin this is September 30. Organized labor is also uh, uh, giving indication that they will begin a strike action on, on September 30. The reason is for government to deal with illegal mining. UTAG has also served notice of beginning a strike action on September 30. The reason is the government must deal with illegal mining. CROCSAG is also threatening to begin a strike action on the 30th September. Illegal mining is also the reason. So these are, uh, you know, the labor unions which are, you know, going to uh, uh, declare a strike action this week. Actually, it's this week. So we have September 26th, September 30, uh, on which the, the, the labor unions want to begin their strike action. Dr. Dominic Osu, a spokesperson for CTAC, he's, joins us, he's joining us. Now, Doc, I'm grateful to you for joining. Now, we know the government, uh, when, when you were on the strike, government got into an agreement with you. What has happened that you declared those, those things as unfulfilled and therefore you want to begin another strike action? Uh, Doc, kindly on mute so we can hear what you're telling us. Okay. So, uh, uh, Dr. Dominic Osu speaks for CTAG. He'll be joining us so we can hear, uh, we, you know, we can then appreciate reasons, uh, the, the details of the reasons they are giving yeah. for their strike action. Doc, I cannot hear you. So I wanted to understand, uh, when government got into that agreement with you, uh, for you to call off the strike, what has happened between that time and now that is making you to, you know, uh, give indication that you're going to start the action again? What has happened between that time and now that is making you to, you know, uh, give indication that you're going to start the action? Yeah, thank you so much. Good afternoon to your viewers. I want to say emphatically that when we called off the strike, we were given timelines by which our all year round compensation and then also the migration will be successfully done. Mm. Now, as I speak okay, to you... Okay, Doc, do, 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 um, do, 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 for us to have a very smooth it. interaction, kindly turn that, mute your television set uh, and then listen to yourself on Zoom so we can have a good call. Because from the way things are running, you keep... 
you know, stopping and, and it's not helping the free flow of this interaction. So if you can mute the volume on your television set and rather let us have this conversation on your, your handset, we'll be grateful. So, so you can do it now and then we can, we can hear you, sir. Okay. Yes, yeah, look, so, so we can now hear you. You were making a point about the fact that they, they agreed to do certain things in terms of your, uh, you know, the migration, if you can continue from there. Yeah, so um, they said that having called off the strike, mm -hmm. they are going to expedite action and then work on the migration. Remember, um, during the NDC era, the migration was done within two weeks. We were okay. migrated from GES to the current uh, payroll within two weeks. Okay. So when we declared our strike on the 14th of June, mm -hmm. we were promised that at worst they are going to migrate us within one month. And as I speak to you right now, the timelines that we agreed upon which the strike was called off have still not been done. Now they promised us that by the first week of September, we would have gotten the offline data coming into the college, and then every member in the colleges of education okay. will see where we have been placed by way of the migration, and then also check our bio data. But as I speak now, we don't know why they are hiding the um, migration offline data uh, from. We don't, we don't understand. Mm. And then also, as I speak to you right now, they promise us that when the strike is called off, by the end of um, August, we are going to get the all-year round compensation for work done in 2022. But as I speak to you right now, 23rd of September, we have not received our money. They okay. keep uh, telling us that the money will come in the gift miss account, but it keeps disappointing, keeps disappointing. And as I speak to you now, we have not gotten our money. This is why we are saying that if by the end of this week, nothing is heard, we are uh, going to have a full-blown full blown strike. Mm. But, but, but I, I remember the time when you called off the strike. Uh, we had had some confirmation from Prinkov that some payment were being done. And also, some migration was happening as of the time you called off. For example, the colleges affiliated to the University of Cape Coast, we understand at that point that the migration was happening. So, when did it truncate, and, 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 and why that? Yes, thank you so much, my brother. This is what we have been saying. It looks as if we have to go on strike to make duty bearers perform their legitimate duties that every month the, the government of Ghana pays them. Mm. It is because of our strike that is why they were expediting action. We thought that having gone on strike for three consecutive times, mm. government would have learned the lesson. Mm. This strike that led to two people dying and then also one person um, snatching phones and being beaten and then also losing so much. Government has still not learned uh, her lessons. And as I speak to you, you'll be surprised that the offline data that the technical committee worked on has not come to the college. Mm, mm, mm. So, have you got in touch with GTEC to understand why that migration process has not been completed? What reasons do they give you? Um, we've gotten in line with uh, GTEC. Uh, they promise us that the, the offline data will come. No, when I mean offline data, you know, the technical committee worked on uh, the various inputs mm. by way of our qualification and our certificate among others. So we are supposed to receive the hard copy of what has been done mm. for us to authenticate if what uh, we have all agreed is uh, what, uh, what was being done. So that has been stated in our timeline that uh, by early September, we are going to receive the offline data but we have not been, uh, we have not gotten it. So we don't understand. And from what we inquire from GTEC, uh, we sent two of our um, national service, uh, sorry, two of our 
our national executive to check on it. They tell us that uh, it has been done, but per what we have agreed, it has to come so that we see uh, what has been done, if it is uh, really what we have agreed or not. And members, as I speak to you, are very anxious because they don't know what is in the migration. And uh, migration is being done for CTAC, and we deserve to know what is in it so that we can be rest assured that whilst we have called up our strike and that we are working, government is also doing its part. And then they also promised us that uh, by this week, we are going to get the appointment letter. But as I speak to you, we have not even received the offline data talkless of the migration, uh, talkless of the appointment letter. So people are very anxious that unless we do, unless we go on a strike, maybe the government may not act. Your last strike, you, you, were, you were on it for more than two months. What should we expect in this one? If you should, you should, you should really embark on it. In fact, we want to state emphatically that we are law-abiding citizens and we know that using strike as um, a weapon to drive home our demands will have repercussions on our students among others. What we are saying now is that government should look at the Ghanaian students. Government should look at what is currently happening and the fact that Teacher education is the foundation of education in Ghana, and the life of the college education lecturer matters because we are training the teachers who go back to train children to become engineers and doctors. Therefore, our welfare matters. So the government should prioritize teacher education and do the needful. The migration has dragged on for more than 23 months. We don't want to go on another strike. In fact, as I speak to you, we are rushing our students through uh, the second semester activities, and you could see occupational stress and burnout being experienced by our members, and then our students too are also going through academic stress and academic burnout. All these things are not good for Mother Ghana. So what we are saying is that duty bearers should rise up to the occasion and do what is needful so that we prevent another strike. Interesting. Uh, since you sent out a note, and I'm sure you have to get, uh, uh, you know, permission for this so that your strike will be legal. Has that process been exhausted yet? Um, is, tomorrow uh, I'm told there's a meeting between us and government. But here again, look at it. We have had more than 43 meetings, consecutive 43 meetings on our condition of service. So the question now is that do we eat meeting? Do we eat meeting? Do we eat promises? Please, you don't need meetings. You don't need uh, promises. They know what to do. They know what they have to do. They know they have to sign some documents. They know they have to give us the migration, the migration offline data. They know they have to pay us the all year round work. People are being paid for some of these things. As we are working and killing ourselves, they should also go ahead and do the needful. All right. Uh, grateful to you, sir, for joining us, and we'll keep an eye on how this, this uh, transpires. So that's it there with, uh, you know, CTAG. They are threatening, uh, you know, to go on strike if government does not uh, honor their request by the end of this weekend. This is the pause here on the Joy News channel. My name is Samuel Brace. We'll take a break here. When we return, we have a conversation with some interesting group of people you'd love to listen to. So please do stay.